Well, hello there. I'm Dan Holman, and I'm more than excited to be here talking to you about the rail siding that we have on our farm in Lusland, Saskatchewan. Our farm is unique in the fact that we have our own rail siding and that we have the capability to bring in rail cars and send out rail cars. So learning how to move them properly is of vital importance to the, to the safety and, and effectiveness of our farm and operations. So rail cars are very large, they weigh over 200,000 pounds and they have a lot of momentum when they get rolling so we need to know how to stop them and move them safely. They can cause a lot of, uh, a lot of damage and a lot of pain to, to a person if they're not taken seriously. So throughout this video, um, you're gonna see uh, some key learning points. So you're gonna see uh, how to position your body on the rail car while we're moving it so you don't get hurt. You're gonna learn how to safely operate the hand brake on a rail car. You're gonna learn about the different types of braking systems on the car, the air brakes versus hand brakes. You're gonna learn about how you can move a car uh, we use a, a pinch bar because that's the system that we have and it's, it's, it's available and it's, it's very economical for the size of our operation. And you're also going to learn about uh, how to communicate with the rest of the crew while you're working. So we want to make sure everybody's talking to each other while we're moving these cars so that everybody is safe. Now, on to the show. The safety procedures and protocols being demonstrated in this video are from Canadian Pacific Railway's Customer Safety Handbook. Okay, so when you're climbing ladders, it's just good practice to have three points of contact. It just makes things safer. So it's either two hands and a foot or two feet and a hand. And then, when you're operating the brake, don't stick your thumbs through these holes and never, this is your brake release, never stick your hand through there to release it. Because when you release this, this will spin. And if your hand's in there, or your arm, it's not going to be nice. It'll rip it off or hurt it anyways. So, thumbs on the outside and never stick your hand through the hole to release the brake. So when it comes time to move our cars, when we're wanting to position for our loading system, we first have to remove the brakes so the cars can roll. When the cars are spotted at a location, they are held in place by the hand brakes. There's a hand brake at one end of each car. In this case, you can see them here uh, right beside me. This wheel here is how we're gonna adjust the brakes by hand. When the cars are moving down the tracks, the brakes on the system are controlled through the air system of the locomotive. And before we can move the cars, we have to release the air from the system. Before we release the air from the system, we always want to verify that our hand brakes are on. Uh, regulations state that for, for the number of cars that we have on the siding currently, there have to be two hand brakes on. We have three cars, we have to have two hand brakes. And so before we release the air, we're going to verify that these are cinched up. Okay, and I can tell by the tension that this one is. I'm also going to check the next one. Okay, it's tight. Okay, so there's a couple of ways of, of releasing the brakes. First of all, we can just turn the wheel and you'll see the mechanism slowly starting to move. Should we want to move it really quickly, we can just reach around to the lever on the side and give it a pull and you'll observe that the whole mechanism just releases immediately. I'm going to do that now. Okay, so now this car is, is, is completely free and could roll. Okay, we've made sure that the brakes are on on the other car so that doesn't happen because we're not ready to move just yet. But when we want to tighten the brakes back up, we can just give this wheel a real quick free hand and do that a few times until it starts snugging up. And you'll notice as it starts to tension, it gets harder to turn. And we're just going to keep on turning it till there's real stiff resistance on it. Okay, so we've done that. Now this car is locked back up. Again, when we want to move the cars, we're going to slowly release, we completely release the brakes on one car and then slowly release the brakes on the next one as we try to inch the car forward. And uh, we'll be controlling it with a handbrake uh, from that point on. So we're going to release the air brakes give this rod a pull and if there's still air in the system we'll hear the hiss of the air being released from the from the storage tanks. We 
We're going to hold this rod until we stop here in the air being evacuated. Depending on how much air in there, uh, it'll take more or less time, but you can hear it starting to die down now. In a best uh, case scenario, we would be pinching the car ahead with our, with our tool here and running the brake from the same end of, end of the car, which would be the trailing end, so that we're not within the mechanisms. In this scenario, this car is positioned differently, and so the brakes are at the opposite end that I'll be pinching at so that I'm not in between the cars where it's unsafe. And so we have radios, and I'm gonna go to the other end of the car, I'm gonna pinch it ahead, and we'll communicate to the rear radios uh, when it's time for Kyron to, to stop the car when we get positioned properly for a moment. So now that we're safely at the trailing edge of the cars, uh, we're going, to, uh, we're going to release the brake pressure a little bit uh, at the front. I'll, I'll signal the Chiron and then I'm just going to pinch it ahead a little bit with our tool here. So Chiron, you can go ahead and release the brake pressure just gently. And you can see as he releases that it takes next to no force uh, from our tool here to get the, the cars moving. As the car moves ahead, I just keep jacking it ahead. Got yeah, shutter down there. That's a good spot. Well, safety is our number one concern when we're moving these cars. As you've seen in this video, with simple tools and knowledge, you can do a lot of uh, safe and uh, efficient work in moving a rail car. So you've learned how we do it on this uh, video. Stay tuned for the next video where we show you how we unload the fertilizer out of a rail car.